What's up everybody in YouTube land? It's your buddy Chopadong coming at you one more time with a week 14 quick picks video for NFL DFS. If this is your first time tuning in, thank you very much. Thanks for giving me a shot. Hopefully I deliver some content. Hopefully I teach you a little bit and show you a little bit of what's up in NFL. I represent DFSArmy.com. I'm a coach and contributor inside the website. To be quite honest with you, we are absolutely smashing our football season this year. And I know everybody says that, but we've put three people on the King of the Beach qualifier. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we have a $150,000 winner and another $100,000 winner. You can see all the screenshots on our website, dfsarmy.com. Uh, you can get a little bit of poking around, take a look at the content that we offer on a weekly and a daily basis for all the major sports, NFL, NBA, NHL. Uh, we're really rocking and rolling in that arena right now, and you can follow me out on Twitter, at Chopadong. You can also follow me, uh, like or subscribe to this video on YouTube, and get access to a lot of the content that I dump out there for free. Uh, to be quite... Uh, to be quite excited about it, let's we can dive in. I, I want to show you what I typically do. We'll roll through a little bit of this stuff, but I want to obviously show you the page here that you can find. Follow through the wishbone is a research-oriented article that gets your slate off to the right start, kind of gets you pointed in the right direction when it comes to the first glance of the week. It's it's a longer article, but you can skim it at will, and really and truly doesn't matter too much where your mind goes from there. It, it just kind of points you at kind of what the chalk is thinking and stuff like that. Now, honestly, if you're using, if you're not using an, an optimizer in NBA, I got news for you. You're behind the eight ball. We've got thousand dollar four and five figure winners every night inside the NBA. Uh, this is 1400 bucks coming out on a $400 entry. And this is uh little eight or twelve dollar entry winning five but five hundred bucks on god i'm sorry i can't talk today guys i don't know why i'm getting tongue-tied but twelve dollars turned into five hundred dollars in this tournament here so this happens every single day inside the army and it's largely due to the work that keith and al and donuts and those guys are putting in to the projections the player picks how to tweak our optimizer if it gets fed with great projections which ours does optimizers are the way to go in a predictive sport like nba if you're not using an optimizer i'm sorry you're absolutely behind the eight ball you have a noticeable disadvantage it's kind of Kind of a, it's getting to the point where if you can't beat them, join them. And that's just where the industry is. And in such a predictive sport like NBA, where LeBron James is not going to get you a zero on a night, he's going to get you at least 20 to 25 points, even in a bad night, and might get you 60 to 80. So, yes, there's variance there, but it's a lot tighter window. So the value plays are more important. You hit them right, you cash on a just – everyday basis and that's what our members are doing inside the dfs army right now and they're winning tournaments and they're winning a lot of cash if that interests you you need to come to dfsarmy.com and you need to take a look you can find my link everywhere out on twitter in my bio in my articles everywhere follow it come in take a look at us you won't be disappointed when we move on to the website the slack channel this is another experience our vips get where we talk a lot about uh, what plays we like, which ones we don't. This is real-time stuff, and the beauty of it is when a guy is all of a sudden out on rest in NBA or in NFL, a guy does not come out of concussion protocol, something along those lines, bang, we jump into Slack, we let everybody know our members get the goods first. And they get the pivots, they get where you should take those, stuff we can't react to out on Twitter and we can't react to out there on the web in the free content arena. This is what our VIPs are finding so much value in. Um, let's run through a couple of winning lineups because, like I said, I can do this every single day, so I do. You've got uh, Jeff here, and no offense to him, he said won $2 in a free contest thanks to the Domination Station. A 373 is probably his highest score yet. And while that's great, what I don't want us to do is get confused by thinking that we're after a target score. Three, I scored 350 last night. I should cash. I scored 380, and I didn't cash. Oh, no. This is stuff I hear amongst our more inexperienced players, and it's just a, it's a stinking thinking. We need to get that out of our head. Every night is different. Every slate is different. Three-game slates can be high or low scoring. 12-game slates can be high or low scoring. It works the same in football. You hear that target score of, I want 125 points to cash on. That's bullshit, man. It does not 
matter. What you're trying to do in a 50-50 is beat 50% of the opponents, period. That's it. That's all that matters. Beat 10% and you're starting to make money in GPPs. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter if the cash line is 35 or if the cash line is 305. It makes no difference. And too many people get that target score set and then they run off those value multipliers, which I did a video, check back in my video log, where I tried to explain that value multipliers are not a linear scale anymore. You're not shooting for 2x or 3x or 4x. You're not shooting for those numbers. You need to understand that when you pay less for a guy, he needs to do more to help your team. And when you pay more, you're paying for stability. You're not paying for ceiling in LeBron James or in Tom Brady or those guys anymore. You're paying for their floor. You're paying for their consistency. If you pay up 9500 bucks for Tom Brady this week and he gets you 12 points, he screws you. Lucky for you, Tom Brady doesn't do that very often. That's what you're paying for. So that's not a linear scale anymore. It's more of a sliding scale. The higher you pay up, the less of a multiplier you need to help your team make value as long as everybody else in your lineup does their job. So let's take a little scroll up, uh, up and down memory lane. I'll talk to you a little bit about mine at the end. I put a couple of my winners in there from last night. Uh, 350 into 530, 9 into 30 bucks. So 360 into 560. It's a good score. It's good. It's printing cash. 3 into 55. Good job. Uh, look at this one out of our, our founder, Football Geek. 944 in, 6,400 out. So you want to follow guys that swing big sticks? We've got them. $12 winner here for second place. There's a nice little one. 200 in, 850 out. I'm telling you, every day, 12 in, 500 out. 200 in, 850 out. Every day. 144 in, 300 out. 350 in, 1500 out. Guys, you don't need to be a big baller, but if you are, we can help. That's what we do inside DFSArmy.com. And I will tell you to use the coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P. C-H-O-P triggers a 20% off discount that's good for the life of your membership. As long as you stay a member, it's 25. it bumps the $35 rate down to $28 every single month as long as you remain a member. You get access to everything. You get coaching. You get uh, banter back and forth inside Slack. You get the latest updates in real time. You get... All of our content, you get our optimizer, you get all of our projections, you get our tools and our spreadsheets and our stats, and you get it all. When you have all for 28 bucks a month, that is a third of the cost of a lot of other websites out there. And we teach you to build lineups. We don't just provide a lineup for you. These are all different lineups, as you see, guys, uh, running in and out of there. I want to show you, yeah, mine, I'm a small baller, guys. I don't play big money. Five in, 25 outs, fine with me. Score a 382, good job. Uh, 5 in, 8, 10 out. The reason I want to show you this is this score didn't do as well, but you need to look into the ladder strategy or the ladder system. It's an easy one to search out on Google, and you can also find it all over our articles inside the DFS Army. But the ladder structure is a contest allocation that teaches you to back up your risk. Take those tournament lineups and back them up with some cash games, and it shows you what proportion and what ratios to lay them out at so that you're still profitable. Five in and $8, and eight dollars out, it, that'll grind up a bankroll. It didn't hit the four, it finished 14th in a 100-man contest. It didn't win any money in a big league or in a GPP. What it did, though, was it still hit the double ups, and it made money. Why? Because I know how to show you how to allocate your contests, and I know how to teach you this system so that you can do it for yourself. So let's put that aside. Let's dive into some of the quicker picks, pick up a little bit of speed here. Uh, I may use some of the 4 for 4 for reference. This is proprietary information. Um, phenomenal site. It's another place. We have multiple subscriptions. It's another place I would consider joining if I was you. I say that because Chris Raybon is absolutely awesome. I'm not going to share a ton of the stuff. What I will show is a little bit of what, if I need to reference some numbers, I may dive into there or game logs and show you that. But that's a lot of where I get my research from. Our research station and then 4 for 4 and some Roto Grinders and some of those other sites out there that are very, very good. So let's jump in. We'll walk down... Uh, We'll walk down some of the scores, and I'll tell you a little bit of who I like as I start to put together box checkers, which is another article that I put out on Fridays that shows you kind of 
Who's hitting the criteria to make value? Are they home? Are they favorite? Are they playing in a high scoring game? Those types of things are boxes you need to check off on a routine basis. So when we look at the quarterbacks, we don't see a lot. I don't see a lot. I can't stand the fact that, well, I guess we don't see the Monday, the Monday game on this slate. But I will still talk a little bit about the, the Thursday games and the Monday games if they're not, yeah, see, they're not on this one. But anyway, when I mention some of the quarterbacks, if you want to play those larger slates, the probably the best game on the slate this week is the early one, New Orleans and Atlanta. There are others, you know, Kansas City, Oakland could shoot out, whatever. You'll find those up in the wishbone. But New Orleans and Atlanta looks like a pretty juicy game that you're going to want some pieces of. So there should be a lot of Thursday to Monday action on this slate, on that particular slate this week, and for good reason. I I like Carson or I like Carson Wentz most weeks, but I like Alex Smith perhaps the most this particular week. At 8,200, I don't mind paying up for my quarterbacks on FanDuel. On, on DraftKings is where I'll pay down because of a lot of the bonuses, a lot of the scoring structure. On FanDuel, I will still tend to pay up when I can. This week, I don't see a lot of those cheaper quarterbacks helping me out and doing much for me. I know McCown's been great. Uh, I know that there are playable guys out there, but I just don't trust any of them enough to build my foundation of my lineup around them. So, And I'm not a fan of Alex Smith either. He's been very inconsistent. He bounced back last week. I'm hoping... He can do it again against Oakland. Oakland's defense is bad across the board, and it looks like a game that could shoot out. Kansas City's at home. There's a lot of factors working in Alex, Smith is fa Alex Smith's favor, and I'm going to probably capitalize on that somewhere. Now, here's why. Tom Brady's 9,500. I'd rather play Alex Smith just due to this price and the savings alone. Now, if I get to the end of my construction – and I've got a lot of money left over, I would automatically go up and buy up Tom Brady on that slate. In fact, let's shift off of this slate really quick while we're thinking about it, and let's get into a little bit different scenario here where we're using that Thursday to Monday slate. I think that's going to be a little bit better example for what we're trying to do. We're just calling up this. I don't play these, con these little penny contests. They're not my thing. But while we're waiting, we got Tom Brady here at the top of the list at 9,500. There's a big difference between the two. I do like Tom Brady's spot better than Alex Smith. Phillip Rivers for the same price? I think I'd rather take Alex Smith, to be quite honest with you. And, you know, down. let's go down cheaper. Matt Stafford, hand issue. Matt Ryan, inconsistent this year. Not a terrible spot. If you wanted to play him, I wouldn't necessarily argue. But for 300 more, I'd take the safety in Alex Smith. It seems like with the play calling duties shifting, he's back on track. Um, Russell Wilson is being asked to do an awful lot, but Jacksonville does not mess around in the passing game, man. They defend the pass, and they don't allow points to quarterbacks. Not a good week for Russell Wilson, especially on the road going east for an early game. Uh, Jared Goff, not a believer. Philly's tough defense. L.A.'s tough defense. That type of game seems like it's going to be a little more defensive than offensive. Derek Carr's an okay spot if I could just trust him. I can't trust him like I can trust Alex Smith. And plus, Derek Carr's on the road. Alex Smith is at home. So that's my reasoning for these quarterbacks and these tiers and why I like what I like. They are Those other names are in play, but they're a little bit riskier. I think that Alex Smith's probably the safest quarterback in that price range this week. Not a big fan of the play. I don't think he's even that safe, but that's just kind of the way I see it. As far as running backs are concerned, it usually starts and ends with Le'Veon Bell, and I can't believe he's not. I know it's because of Baltimore, I guess, but I can't believe he's not more expensive. Alvin Kamara, I'm sorry. Alvin Kamara is overpriced right now. The workload is not there right now. He's in a committee with Mark Ingram. However, Mark Ingram has an issue. He's got a toe issue. And as long as he's got that toe issue, if he sits out, he hasn't practiced much this week. If he sits out, Alvin Kamara is valuable at 9,200. So you've got to watch that news, and you've got to be ready to rock and roll with the Kamara news. If it breaks that way, like we said on the podcast last night with Football Geek, or like he pointed out, New Orleans or Atlanta has trouble defending pass catching backs. There is no better pass catching back in the league right now than Alvin Kamara. That is a massive spot for him. And at 9,200, hopefully it scares people away. I don't think it will because he's totally the shiny new object and the soup du jour. But 
he's worth it at 9,200 if Ingram sits. If Ingram is scheduled to play, I can find a fade in Alvin Kamara. I do like Le'Veon Bell. I know it's Baltimore, but Le'Veon has scored three. The last three weeks, he's scored 20-plus points on FanDuel. He's getting in the end zone again. He's definitely worth playing when he's Le'Veon Bell. When he's not, when they're not using him, he's pricey. But I think they've finally started passing back to, you know, Baltimore defends the pass fairly well. So I don't think that shuts down Antonio Brown, but I think it shuts down the passing game in general. And I'm ben, Big Ben is just, I'm just not sold that he's the Big Ben of old. So I do believe that Le'Veon Bell gets a lot of usage in this game. And that's kind of what we asked for. Now, I'm not going to start with the double high like I usually do and just jam in Kamara and Le'Veon Bell. I'm going to scroll down here. You know, Kareem Hunt's in a GPP type spot. If Joe Mixon doesn't clear protocol, Gio Bernard is definitely in play. But as I keep scrolling, Christian McCaffrey over on DraftKings, probably a better play. Uh, if I keep scrolling down, Lamar Miller's a name that I like. And I, he's home. He's favored. He's getting a ton of work. And San Francisco sucks defending running backs. He's one that I'm plugging in right away. Now, there are other names that you can keep going down and find. You know, Burkhead seems to be the guy, along with a little bit of Deion Lewis, but it seems like more Burkhead. But the minute you try to guess on him, Belichick screws you. Kenyon Drake is in a pretty good spot against New England, but New England tends to – I don't like going up against New England defenses because when they're playing well, they tend to game plan people out of the game. I don't know if they're going to take him or Jarvis Landry. I'll tell you a little bit about Jarvis Landry here in a minute. Uh, I guess Alex Collins is in play. Uh, scrolling down a little bit more, uh, Riddick not in play. Uh, you know, if I it, there's one right there, Peyton Barber. Peyton Barber has looked pretty doggone good. He's getting a lot of work, and there's not a lot of competition for touches in that offense. You want a high volume back? You want to save up some money to get up to Brady? You go double low this week. Now I may not need to go this low. We'll see how it works out. But my overall thought of this slate right now, pricing wise, if you're going to see, there's not a lot in here to choose from other than maybe Bell and Kamara. But I think what you're going to find is in the wide receiver spot, you're going to find there are not a lot of value plays, you know, down low in the 6,500 and under range like we like to see. I mean, yeah, there are names you could be using, but they're not necessarily in great spots. You know, Sanu, usable. Marquise Goodwin might be the punt that I use. And the reason why, he's been getting a lot of targets, and Houston is not good against defending the pass. So I, this is kind of a little riskier play. I don't mind locking in big-time running backs and then going low at wide receiver because receivers are typically volatile position, even at the top when they tell, when all the pundits around the industry tell you that you pay up for consistency and you pay up for targets. It's a bunch of crap. I mean, let's look at some of these names. Uh, Antonio Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, fine. Julio Jones, inconsistent this year. Keenan Allen's been hot lately but was inconsistent early. A.J. Green, where'd he go? Tyree Kill, where'd he go? Robbie Anderson is okay, but he's pricey now. Larry Fitz is another good, solid pick, but Brandon Cooks, inconsistent. Michael Thomas, no ceiling. Adam Thielen, bad matchup. Doug Baldwin, where's he been? Alshon Jeffrey, please. Mike Evans, please. Where? Des Bryant, good God. These are your high price. You don't trust any of these guys, do you? How can you trust any of these guys? I don't. They're not either not getting targets or not getting in, their, in the end zones, or they're just vanishing on week to week, and that's too much to pay for that. If I'm going to pay $8,500 for Julio Jones, I'd rather pay $8,800 for Le'Veon Bell, lock in the production, lock in the floor, and gamble with the wide receiver. The problem is this week we are going to probably have to pay up because we don't have a lot of value down low. So let's start with the Marquise Goodwin. Let's look. Muhammad Sanu is fine at 5,800. I really don't see a lot else down in that area. So I've got to start coming up. When I start coming up, I will say Jarvis Landry is okay. The one thing I will say about Jarvis Landry, it's a little more of a tournament play than a cash type of play. I can remember, and it's it's recency bias or cognitive bias in my brain to use the geek's term and Renee Miller's term. But it is it is co cognitive bias in that I'm only remembering what worked for me and I'm not remembering what didn't. I can tell you Jarvis Landry's getting in the end zone more this year than he ever has. Therefore, he's a more valuable player than the $7,000 receiver. This particular matchup, however, scares me because it's New England and I don't really want to take the chance. However, once again, however, number two, Jarvis Landry in garbage time 
can definitely tear up New England. When New England gets out to a big lead, 8, 10, 12 points on Miami, which they should, and then just sit back and wait and let you march down the field, but don't let you into the end zone, Jarvis Landry is the go-to. And in the slot, they tend to just let him run wild. So Jarvis Landry may, in a, on a DraftKings certainly, may be really, really worth taking a shot at at that price point because he might really rack up 10 to 15 targets you know, nine to 12 catches for 120 yards. And he might even sneak into the end zone if he gets in there early in the game. So that is a game. I don't mind him. He's a little more GPP, but I can remember specifically a couple of games where he has torched the new England Patriots in the fourth quarter. Hopefully you new England fans can tell me that now I'm sure he's been shut down by them too. So like I said, it's probably selective memory, but there's your Jarvis Landry piece. Scrolling up a little bit, not a fan of Cooper. Uh, Funchess is going to have a bad matchup. I do like Crabtree coming back. Excuse me, coming back off of uh, off the suspension against KC, who can't defend crap, and with a little bit of hobbled. Um, the other guy, they're going to probably feed Crabtree. I'm just wondering how consistent Derek Carr can be. I would plug him in for now, but I'm going to try and go a little bit higher at wide receiver. Um, I'm not going to touch any of these turds. Uh, bad matchups, no ceiling, like I said. Larry Fitz is in a good spot. I could go Larry Fitz, and I could go Crabtree, and I could call my receivers done. But for whatever, you know, Larry Fitz, guys, Larry Fitz's targets in the last five weeks, 8, 14, 10, 8, 10. That's a lot of targets, leads to a lot of receptions for him in those short little passes where Larry Fitz is still busting them. He gets in the end zone, you know, three out of the last five weeks, or three out of the five, I'm sorry, three out of the last five weeks, he's scored 20 points or more on FanDuel. That's good value. He's in a middling spot with Tennessee, and he's got a quarterback that's feeding him and can't air it out down the field to feed the others. So it does lend to some Larry Fitzgerald usage, and they don't really have a great running back. So this is kind of interesting because with Larry Fitzgerald, it takes a play out for tight end, which I will I, I will talk about. I'm not going to run them both, and I'll tell you why here in a minute too. Um, if if we scroll up a little bit more, I'm really gunning for either Allen or Hopkins. So let's go ahead and start up at the top and see what this does for us. It's dropped our number down to 6,500. We really could use, and that's with going double low at running back. We could really use another value receiver, but I like these guys enough that I would run them in there. Now, remember, I can always drop from Hop Hopkins to Crabtree if I need to, and I'm still paying up at that more than I typically do. But we, do, we drop down into tight end, and I would love to get Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey's in a smashing spot. 6,000 doesn't hurt us too bad. So we'll keep our eye on that as well. But if I'm not going to be using him, uh, Witten's playable. Jack Doyle is playable. Where is he? 50-something hundred for Jack Doyle. Why don't I see him? 5,400. He's playable. But if I'm going all the way down, I'm going all the way down to Ricky Seals-Jones at 4,500. Because he gets five or six targets every week. He's gotten in the end zone three times in the past three weeks. He's used down there in the red zone. That's a lot of what I asked for. And again, we're talking about shorter routes for the quarterback that's not airing it out down the field. I think Ricky Seals-Jones is still playable. I don't think he kills you if he only gets me four points or something like that. He's going to get me five or six targets every game. That's all he's done since he's been playing. So... That's a good spot to start for a tight end. And at this price, it's pretty attractive. That bumps my salary back up to where now I've got Hopkins back in the mix. I can even maybe, I might even work on taking a good one out or taking a running back up. Um, you know, I may bump up to Kelsey a little bit. I don't know. that These are all of the options. What I don't like is a fundamental flaw that a lot of people will do. If I'm running the pass catchers, Fitzgerald and Ricky Seals-Jones, I kind of need to use the quarterback, don't I? Because if I have, if I'm counting on uh, Fitzgerald to get a lot of targets and get a lot of catches and get in the end zone, and I'm counting on Ricky Seals Jones to get a few targets and get some red zone usage and get in the end zone, if they both have big games, my quarterback did too. So once you use two pass catchers, it sort of dictates that you use that quarterback. I'm not really willing to use Blaine Gabbert and really bank on this. So what that tells me, since I'm not trusting Blaine Gabbert's going to put up 20, 25 points, I need to make a decision here between Larry Fitz and Ricky Seals-Jones. And I'd probably, now that I think about it, get off of Seals-Jones 
Um, let's plug Doyle in for now and see where that gets us because it's going to hold this number, and then I might be able to bump it up to Kelsey. That might be what I'm really after opposed to going up to the running back. I don't know. Again, there's a lot of different ways you can take this. For kickers, I'm just looking for cheap guys that are at home and are favored in big games. You can't argue Zerline's production. Uh, it might be a defensive type of game. It might be some kind of a struggle. At 5,200, it's not as big. I mean, what is a $700 difference between 5,200 and 4,500? So that's not like it's some massive savings. It's not like 9,500 for Tom Brady and 6,000 for, you know, Brett Hundley or something like that. It's not a $3,000 say. We're talking about 700 bucks. 700 bucks doesn't buy me a lot elsewhere, so it doesn't kill me to go ahead and pay up for the kickers. I ideally would like to pay down where I can, but I don't see a lot down here. Butker might have some wind issues. Um, suck up Lambo haven't been as good as they were earlier. Vinatieri's, you know, it just is what it is. Going down, I don't know. Coons in the Chargers land may be okay, but he hasn't done a lot yet. For me to see, it's it's a gamble. If I'm, I don't, I really wouldn't rather gamble. I'd rather take a Guskowski in a high-scoring game, Lutz, uh, maybe a Bryant in high-scoring games, or just go with Zerline and just keep running him. He's the better kicker out there. Tucker's good too, but what the hundred bucks? I don't know. Um, ah, lower scoring. I don't know. I I think I probably just go Zerline. He's got the big boot, and it just leaves me. Leaves me enough that I can probably play. When I Buffalo Bills, I, I know they're facing Indianapolis. That's fine. I'd rather take the Jaguars at 5,200. And what does that get me? 10-2. Holy crap, I didn't see that coming. Now I've got some some fun to play with. 5,100, I'd probably just take the dominant Jaguars defense. They are first in points allowed, second in interceptions, first in uh, in fumble recoveries, First in return touchdowns, they're absolutely dominant. By the numbers, they're better than the 2015 Denver Broncos that was 5,600 and 5,700 on FanDuel back in the day. This is still a bargain at this price. Chargers are awfully good too, but it's only a $100 difference. If the Chargers were three, four, five hundred dollars $500 difference, I'd drop down to them. But for me to save enough money... I just don't see it happening anywhere down in here and other than taking a gamble. Maybe you could take a gamble on the Jets. Denver's been bad. They've been turnover prone. Um, if you really wanted to, you could you could probably do that. That's another thing to play with. Let's go plug in. Um, Alex Smith is fine, but let's plug in Angry Tom. We got 700 left to play with. That's not going to get me up to Kelsey, so I guess I have to leave Doyle if, uh, is fine. Where would I start playing with the upgrades? I've already got the highest defense, the high, or pretty close to the highest defense in price, highest kicker in price. Um, I don't really need to come up off of any of these running backs. I certainly can't reach anything for 700 more. Uh, what can I do at wide receiver? What can I do at wide receiver if I get rid of Goodwin? Cooper Cup, okay. Don't know that he's better than Goodwin this week. Uh, Curse Aguilar, Devon, not exciting, so Goodwin's probably fine. If I drop DeAndre Hopkins and go down to Crabtree, what does that do me? That leaves me 7,900 for a receiver, which gets me, I don't need Tyreek Hill. I would have liked Keenan Allen. Uh, Robbie Anderson, don't need a Michael Tyson. See, now I'm down into the purgatory range where everything's caught. So, again, you know, can that get me, if I go to Goodwin... And I know this will work, but if I go to Goodwin and then go up to Kelsey, it's going to cost me Brady, which I'm okay with because I would take Kelsey and I would stack him with Alex Smith. Take out Tom Brady, go Alex Smith. Now you got 900 left to play with. And that's not going to, as we know, it's not going to get me a lot. If, I, if I'm willing to let go of Michael Crabtree, I think that gets me Keenan Allen. Nope, 8,400. Need a little more. Okay. Hmm. So this is just kind of the fun in playing around with lineups. Another thing we can do is we can blow it up. We can start off since value wasn't much of an issue. Let's run up to Kamara. Let's drop down to Peyton Barber. Let's forego Lamar Miller. Let's run Ricky Seals Jones. Let's run the Jags D. Let's run Zerline at kicker. 
I could spell it right, which I probably can't. There we go. Now I'm looking at 7,600 for my receiving core. 7,600 for my receiving core. If I start, I, I could put Tom Brady in there. And now I'm at 6,900. Watch what Goodwin does. Marquise Goodwin brings it back up to 7,600 for two. If I threw a Sanu in there with him way down low, now I got 9,400, and that gets me Antonio Brown. You know, if you want, or DeAndre Hopkins. If I wanted DeAndre Hopkins, I'd take Sanu out for 800. I see what that upgrades me to. Let me just go ahead and fill the cap. Uh, Marquise Lee, Cooper Cup again, Watkins, whatever, Aguilar. I would still probably go down to Mar to Goodwin. Um, Sanu, God. You could take a shot on somebody here, too. We could throw in Cooper Cup. We could do a lot of different things. We could come up off of Seals Jones to Doyle. Let's try Larry Fitz. See how I try to stick within my core list as much as I can? And that's going to cost me a thousand bucks. Where am I going to find the thousand? Well, I know where I'm going to find the thousand. Who was my other wide receiver? Dang, why am I forgetting this? It was Hopkins. I know where I'm going to find my thousand right there. Quarterback is not as important as everybody thinks. Now I got 300 left. And that's not a bad lineup either. So you mix and match and you play and you goof around, and that's essentially how you build these lineups. Use your short list. Go through these lists. Build your player pool. Base it off of stats. You know, like I said, Ricky Seals-Jones, Tennessee's not that good. Five targets, six targets, five targets, and red zone work the last three weeks. Witten's in play versus the New York Giants. New York Giants are terrible against uh, defending the tight end. Kelsey's probably the best on the slate. Doesn't look like it's going to be too easy to reach him. It doesn't look like you're going to have any trouble paying for the Jaguars. One thing I didn't do is drop from the Jaguars down to the Jets to see what that freed up. Play with that. Uh, Marquise Goodwin and Sanu looks like one of those two are going to be important for your wide receiver core, and then you can use combinations of Jarvis Landry, Crabtree, Larry Fitz, D-Hop. Maybe you can get up to uh, Keenan Allen or even Antonio Brown if you want to. I don't trust Antonio Brown as much as I trust Le'Veon Bell this week. Le'Veon Bell would be my ideal uh, pick even against Baltimore, but it looks like uh, Kamara, if Ingram is out, is a better play. Looks like Peyton Barber's in a good spot. Looks like uh, Lamar Miller's in a great spot. You could even go double low and get up to Tom Brady like we discussed. Alex Smith, Tom Brady, maybe some Phillip Rivers, maybe some Derek Carr. That's your short list in a nutshell. Again, you're going to need some higher-priced wide receivers. That's going to cost you some of the higher-priced running backs, and it might cost you Travis Kelsey. It won't cost you Tom Brady if you're really hell-bent on him, though. So you're going to have to plan accordingly. Probably start with some value backs, work your way up this week, and kind of kind of just go by that. It, I don't like it because it's volatile and it increases – uh, the variance in my lineups, but you know what? If I make two or three or four different lineups, which I talk about a lot, that also helps in that area too because it allows me to sort of take a shot at two or three of those lineups doing well as opposed to just putting all of my eggs in one basket. That's something I preach against inside DFS Army too. So once again, if this is the type of coaching type of material you like, click like, click subscribe on the video, uh, follow me on, on Twitter, let's talk, let's interact, become a VIP inside DFSArmy.com, use coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P, for that 20% off discount because friends don't let friends pay retail. All right, everybody, that's week 14. That's your quick picks. We're out. We'll see you when we see you.